Dear audience, now it's an honor for me to invite Mr. Turul Günay to the stage. He is representing TEDAR and he is acting as the president of Supply Chain Management Association in Turkish TEDAR. Turul, uh, Turul Bey, now uh, you take the stage. Thank you very much, Mian Hanım. So my name is Turul Günal. I have been working almost for 33 years for the company uh, Siemens. I am also the founder president of the Supply Chain Management Association of Turkey, so-called TEDAR. We founded this association eight years ago with the leading companies of Turkey, such as Koç, Borusan Bosch, uh, Finance Bank Siemens, Siemens Bosch, Evaletleri. So I would like to also thank you for your kind invitation, uh, Nihan Hanım, and wish you all a very successful uh, conference. It's our honor. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I will be talking about very briefly uh, about the development and challenges of the world economy. And certainly uh, nowadays, very famous subject, supply chain management during the COVID period, what kind of challenges, difficulties, or opportunities we would have as a, as a company regarding supply chain management. So, as mentioned, uh, we have been living in a very, very volatile, uncertain, complex world over the last uh, decades. So, the, the weather has been especially very foggy, as we all know, during the pandemic period. And will continue, though, regarding my understanding, uh, to be so special until end of first quarter of uh, 2022. So uh, COVID, uh, unfortunately, uh, the new COVID cases in the countries uh, has been or have been increasing. And regarding the uh, challenges of the countries, we will uh, be seeing soon or re regarding the restrictions of the related countries, we will be seeing soon. Unfortunately, the numbers can't be decreased for the time being, especially. So I told you that we have been living in a very VUCA environment over the last decades. When we would look at the picture of the 500, Fortune 500 companies since 1955, would you imagine that 90% of these companies have been disappeared since then? So since 2000, 50% have been disappeared. So there is no insurance that you are listed on the top 500 fortune companies that you can continue working or making business. <laughs> so also the self-life decreased from 61 years to uh, actually 18 years. So many years ago, I read a book, so-called Who Moved My Cheese? <laughs> so, <laughs> so if we are not in a position really to focus on our company, to focus on our sectors, to focus on our research and development activities, or to focus on our people, right skilling our people, so to focus on our portfolio, suddenly our cheese might be moved. <laughs> <laughs> without that we know that cheese is moved. So, I'll also put here the world market value of the world top 10 uh, companies. So, would you, uh, would you imagine that some of these companies would be somehow in the next decades uh, would be disappearing from the list? So, I not, maybe you would think, but I also put here uh, the value of market value of Istanbul Stock Exchange. This figure might be decreased because of the hard currency developments of the last weeks uh, in Turkey. But if we would like to be uh, one of the 10 biggest economies in the world, really we have to make sure as a country that the number of these com uh, companies increase, which are listed on the Istanbul stock market. Certainly also the values have to be increased. So the value of the banking sector in Turkey was around more than $100 billion. And uh, for the time being, it decreased to $14 billion. So it is 
or value is it is our asset it is the asset of the country so we have to really focus on the values of our country on the values of the companies certain the most valuable assets are our people so we have to also focus on the on the on the people uh, as well uh, would you please close the microphones uh, Sorry about this, Turul Bey. Kerem Bey. Bey, can you hear me? Uh, sesinizi kısabilir misiniz? Sorry for the inconvenience, Turul Bey. Sorry for oh. interruption. Not better. So, on the other hand, uh, our, uh, our customers, how they behave. I mean, uh, the customers have uh, much more challenging expectations than ever so for example 76 percent of the customers ex expect that the organizations understand their needs not the opposite i mean <laughs> I, I when i was working in the sales as cfo in this siemens healthcare so we called the customers the king yes they have been the king they will be the king so 87 of the 87 percent of the customers uh, digital buyers consider order delivery times for example that uh, as a determining factor when purchasing so 42 percent of the business to business customers use mobile, mobile devices for purchase processes so it means we have to get ready for the digital world I mean, certainly there are uh, other factors to run a successful company since our subject has been customer challenges. So the others I won't mention. Oops. Yes, uh, on this slide, you see how suddenly the market can be changed. It is your sector, automotive sector, from one year to other, it decreased by 14%. Have you expected that? I don't think so. Am I ex <laughs> have I expected that? <laughs> I didn't. So the, suddenly, it is just an example. The whole world market has changed, as you know, during the whole pandemic period. We'll be changing as well. So we have to get ready for such kind of challenges. This is just an example. There are other examples, such as 97% uh, of Chinese customers want to change their mobility behavior to improve TOT footprint. This is 70% in Germany and 52% uh, in US. My message would be that we really have to focus uh, on the regions, on the cities, on the on the markets very closely where we would like to act. On the other hand, uh, total vehicle park projection up to 2035 sees stagnation in Europe, marginal growth in US, but stronger growth in China. It means the regional evaluations from the sales side have to be have to be very closely realized. These are other examples. I would skip these uh, examples. You can have the slides if you would like to have. So, thank you. I mean, we have been talking about the supply chain management importance during the during the whole uh, COVID period. Why? Because the average industry we are fifty two percent of the revenue. Regarding your sector, we are 60% of the revenue. And regarding oil sector, we are 74% of the, of the revenue. So it means you can imagine how many different evaluations factors or leverages you would have to run a, a successful company or to have a really excellent brand brand uh, for your company so i also assume that uh, <laughs> the supply chain management maturity level wouldn't be enough to run a successful company but today's subject is supply chain management certainly 
all the others, other uh, functional units or business units should have the same maturity level. We have to be a very, really mature uh, corporate company. So we have to have a very mature HR department, very mature business uh, units, very mature IT communication, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, but the role of supply chain management is or has been huge. So, the pandemic had substantial negative effects on supply chain. We have been hearing that we lived it as well. So, based on the uh, survey of the company Arsen Young, 72% uh, of the participants mentioned that they had a substantial negative effects uh, regarding the uh, COVID uh, pandemic in their companies. What were the reasons actually they had dis disrupted uh, supply chains? I mean, the companies were closed because of uh, COVID or the countries were closed. Maybe we couldn't uh, go to our sites. The seaports were closed. The, the bank branches were closed, etc. On the other hand, we had increased costs. We couldn't send our uh, transport or goods by trucks. Maybe we transport them by, uh, by, uh, by planes. Or we couldn't get our material from our first preferred suppliers. We had to go to other suppliers. Therefore, the costs were increased. There were many, many reasons. But in my opinion, companies can continue to rely on procurement to recover from the current crisis. As in the past, for example, in 2008, global financial crisis, also supply chain played here a huge role that the companies were able to recover. Actually, supply chains have been working properly when the related market have been very predict predictable. But it all started as we had to close the factories, airports, seaports, project sites, warehouses, etc. We had also interruptions in deliveries of raw materials, finished goods, labors, and uh, it also led huge to huge backlogs to be cleaned up, to be executed. Certainly, all these will take time. The investment decisions of the new investment decisions of the companies certainly will take time. They will make return on the return of investment calculations. Certainly, they have to be sure that the demand would uh, continue. So. As mentioned before, the supply chains will not be any more linear. So we will have a much more complex ecosystem. We will have customers. We will have, we have customers, certainly. Uh, we, we, we have internal customers. We have suppliers, second preferred suppliers, third preferred suppliers, forwarders. All of these connection, connections or working platforms have to be realized on cloud-enabled platforms. So we have to also work very closely, much more closer with our suppliers. I don't want to call them suppliers. I better call them partners, manufacturers and uh, customers. So is it only the Supply chain management who goes digital? Certainly not. <laughs> you see here the whole trade will become much more digital. You see here the global retail e-commerce development of the world. You see it increases into the digits. So there will be no way out that the companies uh, can avoid to get <laughs> or to become much more uh, digital. Certainly they have to focus, I mean, they must focus on digitalization, on their digitalization uh, roadmaps, strategies, etc. So also in Turkey, it is not the opposite. It is even uh, better that the e-commerce values or figures have been increasing uh, into, into digits numbers. 
So we have to make sure that also we in our sector act like uh, like a digital uh, company improve or to be processes in each and every area such as sales, such as supply chain, HR, communication, etc. Uh, I also put this slide because you also would like to know how the business will develop or would develop. This is a source institute of uh, supply chain management. Business in the first year half of 2021 compared with the last half of 2020, the business people, they do feel better. Also, uh, business in the second half of 2021 compared to first half of 2021, the business people feel uh, much better. So also they look forward uh, also that the business will continue. Also the third item is very, very positive. This is the atmosphere for the time being. But on the other hand, uh, business people have also some concerns, but uh, which have a decreasing trend. If you would then compare the concerns in January, what they had, for example, delays in shipment supply, 56% and went down to 23% in March 20, uh, in March 2021. So the, the, the business people have been very optimistic in this regard as well. So there is another uh, survey regarding uh, Anson Young realized the big changes on the source horizon of supply chain management, which are these. Increase efficiency, certainly we have to increase the efficiency in supply chain. Retain risk workforce, yes, uh, especially. We cannot afford anymore to have five, six layers organizations. So vice president, senior vice president, director, senior <laughs> director or manager, and uh, deputy managers, expert, deputy experts, etc., etc. Now we have to we have to have a much leaner organizations, and with the uh, responsible people on board, right uh, people on board, that we can take the decision very smoothly, very quickly, in a very agile way. So retain risk workforce. I mentioned increase visibility. Yes, we have to be very very close to the. I will also come to the, back to this point as well. Increase the visibility of supply chain. Increase the re responsiveness, uh, resilience of supply chain. So, on the other hand, uh, COVID, as mentioned, impacted supply chains. So we will go digital, as mentioned. Also proved or reported by the company Ernst Young. There is also Another report which supports the report of Anson Young, Price Waterhouse Coopers. Tomorrow of supply chains will be connected and self-orchestrated. Yes, we will have a connection started with the research and development. You might ask why we have to have people from supply chain management in the research and development <laughs> the departments. Certainly, these professional people can be able to find you suppliers regarding your uh, materials to be developed. So support in a very professional way. Also, after sales, supply chain has, has to know what kind of issues uh, we would have with the customers, we have with the customers after we sold the equipments, etc. So, what is our, on our agenda for the next uh, years to come as supply chain? We have to, as mentioned before, we have to have a supply chain and, uh, service mentality. We have to be very, very close to our uh, internal customers. Also, sometimes we have to also visit external customers to understand especially their needs. Workforce for the future, we have to get ready for the future, as mentioned, the skills, the maturity level of, the, of our people, we have to improve, we have to invest in our people, we have to use the right technology, we have to have right uh, data-driven decisions, we have to have 
uh, decision towers in the in the organization and micro supply chains we cannot run a supply chain from from different countries uh, we have to have really local organizations close to our customers close to our factories uh, in place so on the other hand uh, how we would be able to uh, recover from the crisis how we can look forward uh, for the come uh, for the next coming years regarding supply chains certainly mentioned before i don't want to call supplies to supply these are our partners i mean when we select them we have to work them very closely and if possible for a long time so we have to really have a we have to work in a very open open book uh, way with those uh, partners so the agility if you are very close to the or intern to our internal customers we have to also take decisions very quickly how I, how can we do that when we have the right people on board when we have the right organization structures in place when we have a really corporate structures in place so management of risk yes i would like to focus on that we realized with price water a survey in 2020 we saw that unfortunately uh, 70 percent of the participants didn't have any risk management in their organizations regarding supply chain regarding supply risk management etc so uh, the importance of sustainability will be, will be increasing regarding human rights regarding labor rights compliance uh, environment uh, issues health issues diversity issues we have to all take care of them so i am coming to to my uh, end so mentioned end-to-end -end digital transformation is crucial we cannot avoid that all the regions regionalization and localization will take place instead of globalization we have seen that many many companies had difficulties to import their goods from from far away <laughs> countries so we have to focus what is uh, available to our uh, next uh, uh, cities or countries that we can easily purchase and that we can easily transport etc so actually this is at the end of my presentation thank you very much for listening if you would have any questions please ask thank you Thank you, Mr. Gunal. Thank you for this ironic and to the point presentation. It was really nice to listen to you. Let me check if our audience has addressed you any question. In fact, you have left no room to any questions, I guess, so, since this was a really to the point presentation. Thank you for participating to our event and thank, thank you for you your much. time. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye.